Uh, good morning. I want to thank Ms. Levin for inviting me to speak. My name is Linda Haig. I've lived in Lake Forest and Lake Bluff for over 30 years. I'm here to tell you a story about my son, Mark, who made a decision one night that killed him. Most of you today will not die or have a child that dies as a result of a car crash involving alcohol. But please know that the death of a loved one is not the only consequence of underage drinking. I came here today to share my son Mark's story. He made a decision one night that killed him. I know that he would want me to tell you the story, and I pray that this information will prevent you um, from making that same fatal mistake. And excuse me, I'm, I'm addressing this as though I'm speaking to a, a group of children. I don't often speak to adults, so uh, forgive me for that. I'll try to, to change my verbiage as I go along. Um, my Mark did not die from cancer or kidney disease or some other illness that he could not control. He died because he was drinking and driving with friends. His death was preventable. Mark was just like one of the kids that I spoke to earlier and that were sitting in front of me. And you're just like one of your kids who are young, beautiful, full of life, and, and promise for the future. Um, as your children, my son walked these aisles and, and sat in these seats several years ago. He was once a student at Lake Forest High School. He was officer of his freshman class. He played freshman football and baseball. He was an officer of Croya. He studied algebra, biology, advanced Spanish. He was a popular kid. At the end of his freshman year, he moved to Florida to be with his father. These were tough decisions as Mark's father and I were divorced. He spent his sophomore year at Venice High School. He came home frequently to Lake Forest and spent summers and vacations with us. He agonized whether to go back to Florida or stay here in Illinois with his two sisters and brother. I wish that he would have chosen otherwise. Mark died on November 24, 1996 at 3.05 a.m., almost 15 years ago. He was in a Mustang convertible with two other boys. They had all been drinking. My son was trapped in a car that flipped over and landed upside down. He suffocated to death. The two other boys were thrown from the car and walked away unharmed. Who was Mark? He was a poet, a certified scuba diver, a golfer, a weightlifter, a joke teller, a busboy, an aspiring chef, a reader, and a thinker. He was my son. He was a brother to Joshua, Jessica, and Bridget, a beloved stepson to my husband, Rich, and a nephew to many, a cousin to 22. He became friends with two young men at Venice High School. He went to one of the boys' houses on that Saturday night. According to Mark's friends, Wade's house was the party house. Unfortunately, in most communities, our community is no exception, there are parents who allow their underage children to drink and entertain other children. Wade's father was a doctor and Wade's mother was a nurse. And both were home that night while the boys were playing pool, swimming on the beach, and drinking beer. Mark's curfew was midnight. He went home, kissed his father goodnight, and then snuck out and drove north to Sarasota with his two friends, where they attended a battle of the bands. They left Sarasota about 1.30 a.m. A young couple were driving behind the Mustang as they all drove south on Highway 41. As they approached Osprey, the witnesses say that Wade was driving erratically and too fast. Wade lost control of the car. It hit an embankment. The car flipped and landed upside down. Wade and Jonathan were thrown from the car. The young couple saw what happened and stopped to help. The man tried to get my son Mark out of the car, but he couldn't open the door. He smelled gas, took off his shirt, and stuffed it into the tank where the gas cap was missing. His fiance went for help. The paramedics came and spent three hours extricating my son from the Mustang and then formally identified him. I was notified at 6.30 a.m. that my son was dead. No more horrible or gut-wrenching phone call can be taken by a mother. Our lives will never be the same. 
Wade and Jonathan walked away and went home to their parents that morning. They pointed their fingers at one another as to who was driving the Mustang. One of them lied to try to save his own skin. After months of investigation, fiber and blood samples, newspaper articles and public discussion, Wade was indicted for DUI manslaughter and vehicular homicide. A week-long trial took place. I have some of the articles from the trial on that bulletin board. He was convicted and spent 10 years in jail. He lost his appeal. If you think that this can happen to your child, you're wrong. It happens because some children think it's okay to drink and drive. I was looking at the beautiful faces of your children this morning and, and know that they have tough decisions to make. Although they're not adults, they have to make adult decisions. And some of the decisions that they make affect everyone around them. I wanted to let them know today that what they do has a ripple effect. But I think that you as parents have to help them make these decisions. Try not to be their friend. Try to be their parent. I posed a question to your children this morning. I asked them if they wanted to die like my son. I can answer for him. I know that he did not. He did not want to be remembered for having his photo plastered on the front page of newspaper articles for weeks. That wasn't his planned legacy. But I know he felt, felt peer pressure, although he still thought he was invincible. He was the new kid on the block, and he wanted to be one of the boys. I'm sure that some of you here today have felt that while you were growing up. I know that I have. I'm 59 years old, and I still want to be accepted and loved by my friends. But we must let our children know that alcohol is not the route to take to accomplish that. My son's blood alcohol content was below the legal limit. His two friends were above. Even having one beer can put your child's life in jeopardy. I want to demystify some media and popularly propagated so-called facts about drinking alcohol. It doesn't make your child more sexy or attractive. It does encourage unprotected and unwanted sexual activity. It does make them less inhibited. It makes them think they're smarter, cuter, and stronger than they really are. It does slow their reactions even after one beer. It makes them slur their words and say stupid things. Alcohol consumption increases the occurrence of date rape. It's a depressant, not a stimulant. Alcohol affects a teenage brain differently than grown adults. The teen brain goes through rapid development and wiring changes between the ages of 12 and 21. Teen alcohol use will damage this wiring, which is essential to become a mature, thoughtful, and responsible adult. A young person who begins drinking at the age of 13 has a 45% probability of becoming addicted to alcohol versus 7% for someone waiting until they're 21. Drinking reduces the size and performance of the part of the brain that handles memory and learning by as much as 10%. The fact is, is that alcohol makes children lose their ability to think clearly and make sound decisions. It robs them of one of their most valuable assets, their ability to think. Binge drinking kills more young people in this country than cocaine, heroin, meth, and every other illegal drug combined. Alcohol abuse is the largest drug problem that this country faces. I've heard lots of, lots of excuses from kids who drink, especially from my older children's friends. Some of the excuses that I've heard is, I can handle my liquor. I'm not driving. I don't drink to get drunk. I only drink on weekends. It's just beer. The fact is, is that alcohol is alcohol, and it all negatively affects the performance of your major organs. And all the above are just excuses that can kill you. I want to pose another question to you as parents. Why, why do we all have to drink to have fun? We need to remember that alcohol is a drug, and it should be used accordingly. Our society uses alcohol to relax, celebrate, and socialize. One of the problems is that we abuse it. Teens often drink to get drunk. Drinking becomes the goal, the event in itself. I think we're all smarter than that. We as parents have responsibilities, and I think one of them is to find alternatives for our children to think that in order to socialize, they have to drink. 
We sometimes encourage drinking as adults and, irres and irresponsible behavior. We host pre and post prom parties where we allow alcohol to be served. We hire bouncers to monitor our teens while they are drinking at our homes. We think we're smart by taking the car keys away by giving us and our children a false sense of security while allowing underage drinking. We underestimate our children's abilities to sneak in and out of houses. By participating in the above, we are giving tacit approval to our teens to drink more and in other venues. We're afraid to say no. The law in Illinois states that it is illegal to drink if you are under the age of 21. We must convince our children that this is an adult privilege. The legal penalties for supporting this behavior are serious. We have gone forward with our lives. We've established a scholarship fund at Lake Forest High School. We've raised over $160,000. We sometimes sit on the bench outside of Croya headquarters in Lake Forest that has Mark's name on a plaque. There's a golf award that's given each year at a local club in Mark's name. It's not given to the best golfer, just the one who works the hardest to get better. Mark wrote many poems, and one was written on his bedroom wall. And it goes like this. When death does me part, I shall be remembered for the things I didn't do or did wrong. So ones in the future will learn from my mistakes to become better people. Your children are the ones in the future that Mark wanted to reach. He would like that. Thank you for listening to me.